Hello, my name is Geir Aida. I'm a product marketing manager at uh, Mentor Graphics. Uh, Mentor Graphics is a software company. We are an uh, uh, electronic design automation company. Uh, and uh, among other things, we are the leader in what's called Design for Test, or, or DFT. So in our test and product family, we have a, a series of products that are used to insert test structures and generate test patterns for digital integrated circuits. And what we are showcasing here today uh, is our uh, post-silicon solution. So we have uh, uh, products that are used to diagnose and identify defects in the uh, semiconductor devices that fail manufacturing tests. And these products are based on uh, scan test diagnosis technology. So what we do is for devices that fail uh, manufacturing test, uh, we take the failures that are observed uh, on the tester and map these to internal registers uh, in the device. And then using a simulation-based approach, we are then able to identify the most likely defect locations in the design. And uh, this approach, uh, scan diagnosis, is a software-based uh, approach where that has three main inputs. It's uh, the design description, uh, the test patterns that are used for manufacturing tests, and the fail data from the tester. And uh, traditionally, this these types of tools have been able to produce results that point you down to a logic uh, location in a design, so a, a net or, or a cell. Uh, but what we do at Metagraphics is a little different. We use something we call layout-aware diagnosis, where we also use the layout representation of the design. And that gives us a more, uh, a more precise result. We're able to better differentiate between different types of defects and also to give you a physical location so we can point out the X, Y, and Z locations of the, uh, of the defect in, in your device. Now, part of the, uh, the layout aware diagnosis is again that we use layout data to provide a more accurate result. As an example, um, in case of a suspected bridge, we look at the failing nets, we look at the layout of the failing nets to make sure that they are actually physically adjacent. And then we call out the actual location, physical location in the design where these two are adjacent. Now for devices that are for uh, cases where we see a, uh, a failure that, that doesn't, isn't consistent, that fails maybe for some patterns, um, this is something that could be, uh, typically could be a dominant bridge uh, or an open. Uh, we will then use the layout information to identify the neighbors of this failing net no, right. to see if there's any correlation between uh, the value of the neighborhood nets and the failing net. And we use that to determine whether the suspected defect is a bridge, um, dominant bridge, or an open. And in cases of an open, uh, we look at the, uh, the failing sinks of, the, of a multi-fan-out net to help identify the actual uh, a branch of the net where we suspect the, uh, uh, that the open is located in. And this again gives us more kind of more detailed information and more precise location uh, in the diagnosis result. Now so the tool that performs this diagnosis it's called Tessent Diagnosis. Again the, it takes the, uh, the fail data for a failing device and translate that into a, a defect type and, and the location. And if you have the ability to run diagnosis on a larger number of devices, uh, we have a second tool called Tessent Yield Insight that analyzes multiple diagnosis results and help you select the best devices for failure analysis, basically devices that have uh, the most promising diagnosis results and devices that we believe represent a systematic defect rather than just uh, random defects. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a quick look at uh, some results from test and diagnosis. So test and diagnosis can be run interactively and it can be run in batch mode. And in this case, we're looking at some um, like a report from test and diagnosis run in batch mode. This shows you a kind of a typical output of the tool uh, where in this case we ran diagnosis on the device. The tool expects that the most likely defect causing this failure is an open. This open is uh, in, a, in a segment of a net that covers multiple layers. Uh, there are more details in the report here, tells ex the exact x, y uh, coordinates of, uh, of this defect. But we can also look at this visually and we can look at the exact portion of 
the larger net where the tool believes the defect is located in. So we can look at uh, both the, uh, the actual callout as well as look at the background polygons to see what else is in the neighborhood, so to speak. Um, same thing if we look at the report for a device that is suspected to be, uh, in this case, a, a bridge. Uh, now we're looking at uh, what's shown here is actually two nets. If we zoom in, we see the exact location. Now we can even go in and, and change the color here just to make things uh, look a little, uh, little brighter. Uh, so what's shown here in red is the location where uh, these two nets could potentially be bridged together. Uh, so with the, the callout area here, the defect bounding box, is fairly small compared to the overall area covered by the nets. And the fact that we call out this, this small area gives us a more, uh, more, much smaller area to go, uh, uh, to go look uh, in the FA. Now, as I said, if we have a large number of, uh, of failing devices, we can also sort through all these diagnosis results um, uh, using uh, this second tool called Test and Yield Insight. And we can basically go from a population of, large population of failing devices, we see in this case we have defects all over the wafer, and find specific issues that, that are of interest. Let, in this case, for instance, we're now looking at a subset of the population that uh, represent bridges in metal too. So this is a tool that allows you to basically go from a large population of random looking defects and find um, the most interesting uh, defects and the most in interesting devices representing those defects. So that's basically a, a quick overview of, uh, of test and diagnosis and test and yield insight. Uh, I would invite you to also come uh, check us out on the, on the web, we have several uh, additional resources available. Among other things, we have a couple of webinars that are on the, uh, on the ASM website, and we also have demos and other tutorial on our own website as well. So thank you very much.